Hey guys, it's Cream, aka Miss Cream of the Crop. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Conversations with Cream, and we're spotlighting black owned brands. Today's featured guest is Angela Belize of what is it? Gangsta and oh, Godly and Gangsta Apparel. Yes, let me say that again. Of Godly and Gangsta Apparel. So she is our feature entrepreneur for today's Spotlight on Black Owned Brands, and I'm really excited for you guys to get to know her a little bit more and also find out what exactly is Godly and Gangsta about her and her apparel line. All right, guys, we are back, and I'm here with Angela Believes on Instagram. She is I am Angela Believes. Angela, thank you so much for sitting down with me virtually today. How are you? I am doing wonderful. Thank you so much for having me. I'm delighted to be on your platform sharing what I do and why I do it. Absolutely. Thank you so much. So before we get into everything, in your own words, tell us who Angela is. Angela, wow, that's a good question. You know, I'm constantly evolving. So the same Angela maybe you got a second ago has evolved into something greater and, and something better. So I'm always trying to evolve. Um, I'm passionate about what God brought, brought me here to do and mine. Uh, that means my family, everything that belongs to me, I'm passionate about. So that's who Angela. She's, um, she's full of passion and love and so much I can't even really describe, but we can start there. <laughs> awesome, awesome. So how do you see Godly and Gangsta Apparel in two years? Like, And how do you see yourself creating that change? In two years, I would like to see Godly and Gangsta Apparel thriving on the Internet scene. I want to see people all across the nation, and yeah, I'd like to see it because I am really big on travel, so I do have plans to travel across the world. I like to see people um, wearing my gear and not only wearing it, understand what it means for them. Uh, that, that's important to me. And I also just want to, to bring out more apparel ideas for my, my customers. I know fashion is a really big, big thing, and I just want to bring more variety to Godly and Gangsta Apparel. Okay, all right. So what are some ways that you are working towards making all those changes for your brand within the next two years? First is getting people to wear it. Um, and Well, number one, believe in it. And mm -hmm. in order for that to happen, I had to believe in it myself. So it's getting people to wear my brand. I have been blessed to have it be placed in a store called Prospects party shop here locally um, at 5315 Prospect Avenue. If somebody's local and wants to go pick it up. To avoid Wait, shipping. tell them what city. Give me yeah, the city. Yeah, Kansas City. Kansas City, Missouri. <laughs> 5314 yes. Prospect Avenue. Kansas City, Missouri is where you can get that. In store. Yes. So I'm congratulations on that. All parts of your questions. If I'm leaving something out, let me know. Oh, that's fine. It's listening. <laughs> it's a team. It's, it's a teamwork, okay? It's teamwork. Because I'm like, you know, we don't Everyone that's going to be tuned in doesn't – we have a prospect here in Cleveland, too. So you're probably going to be sending people yeah, – I don't want to guide nobody to the wrong Exactly. Side. They're going to look for that address. Wear my T-shirt. <laughs> <laughs> They're going to like, this address doesn't even exist on prospect. You're trying to get me robbed in downtown Cleveland? I thought she said she was godly. I know she said she was gangster, Not but – Not yet. Not yet. But on its way, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> so why did you name your brand Godly and Gangsta? What does that mean to you? You know, good question. It actually happened from a T-shirt and then a very good friend of mine, I'm actually going to shout out his apparel, Valley Juice, Valley Juice. That's how, that's how the song goes. But anyway, um, he made a post promoting my apparel, and he had actually named it unknowingly knowing that I hadn't yet named it. And so I'm like, how are you going to name my apparel line? And then I thought about it. I'm like, well, I do have the T-shirt, Godly and Gangsta. And I said, hmm, I like it. So registered that bad boy, and here we are today. And it fits perfectly because, yeah, I'm Godly and I'm Gangsta. So it brings those two worlds together, and um, that's how Godly and Gangsta was born. <laughs> <laughs> it's it. It said, listen, 
just because I love the Lord doesn't mean that I can't tell you to back up off me in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. <laughs> I'm not beyond throwing these hands, okay? And yeah. I will I will lay these hands on you and pray for you afterward with a different layeth of the hands. <laughs> That part, yes. There's two different ways that I can lay these hands on you. Would you like the gangster way or the godly way? Because we can pray. Yeah. I can pray for you. Yeah. But I can't. Which one I can, want to get today? Which one I, you You choose. It's your choice. <laughs> yeah. So, so if you had to describe yourself as an entrepreneur with one word, what would that word be? Oof. I'm going to say growth um, because... Being that I just became 100% self-employed for four, uh, also known as Resurrection Sunday. And you have to grow in this business. If you want to flourish, whether your brand is to sell and we'll use Beyonce for it. Today's her birthday. How appropriate. Yes. <laughs> so if she just would lie dormant within a singer, she wouldn't have birthed all the other amazing projects that she has done. So I just want to continue to grow. That's keeping my mind open, keeping my spirit open, just growing with um, a team, just constant growth. I think that's Yes, cool. yes. So is that, would you use that same one word to describe your brand? If not, what one word would you use to describe your brand? Um, I would say one word today I'm going to say is freedom. Um, to me, it's important to have that freedom to be your authentic self, not to care and not to worry if other people are judging you because they're going to do that anyway. We're not ever mm-hmm. going to live in a judgeless society. So why mm-hmm. not just like blat out like in your face with who you are? And that's what Godly and Gangsta Apparel is about. And a lot of people are like, I remember I was at a vendor event and this one gentleman, an older gentleman, um, he came up to me and he was like, how do those two go together? And, you know, I'm so glad that he came up to me and asked me. Now, we might not agree, but God, I allow God to be the head of my life, and I'm gangster about the reasons he brought me here. That means my life purpose. That means my children. That means my loved ones. That means everything that I care about. I'm gangster about it. And like you said, you, there's two different types of layers of hands, and, you know, I just. I, I, and you get to decide which one I, I lay. Yeah, and I deliver accordingly. <laughs> exactly, exactly, exactly. So as an entrepreneur, we all, or just people in general, most of us have goals. So right now, what are some goals that you're currently working on that you're able to share with our listeners? Well, goals, I want to partner with more organizations. I, I've mm-hmm. learned that you really do grow when you have partnerships, collaborations, or however um, you want to work it. I do want to form some meaningful um, partnerships. That's something that I've really been looking into lately here. Okay. All right. Well, I appreciate you for sharing that because I feel like sometimes when we share our goals, someone might be tuned in, someone might be watching, and your goals might align. And that way you're able to meet that person that you didn't know that you needed to know. You needed mm. to meet that person or network with that person that you had no idea that that was the person that you needed to complete that goal. So that's one of the reasons I like to ask a lot of entrepreneurs, what are some of the goals that you're working on that you'd like to share? Because you never know who might be tuned in and might have the same goal that you're working towards. So speaking of goals, um, as an entrepreneur, what are your three biggest accomplishments? Besides wow. becoming 100% self-employed. Congratulations, by the way. I think I told you that on Instagram, but I want to tell you in front of everyone. Congratulations <laughs> for that. So anyway, what are your three biggest accomplishments as an entrepreneur thus far? Well, I have to say thank you so much for that congratulations. I appreciate sure. that. Uh, the three biggest accomplishments, accomplishments on being an entrepreneur, I would have to say, oh, I didn't think I didn't have time to prep for this question. <laughs> oh, oh, um I would have to say, if I'm being honest, is believing that I could do it, number one, and mm-hmm. then having other people believe in me has been amazing. So saying that to say for these first two, it's important that you have that belief for yourself, people. Therefore, other people can believe in you. And third is that I keep trying. I mean, it's very easy to give up when all things in your life are going haywire and completely and absolutely wrong. Um 
But the fact that I keep trying, um, I'm proud of that. Yes. I'm going to give that to myself. That's amazing. I love that accomplishment. The fact that you keep trying and don't give up, that's a great accomplishment. I know yeah. to you, you're like, well, that's that might not be as big. No, that's big because no matter where your brand is, whether you're just starting out or whether you're huge like Target or Walmart, mm -hmm. you still have to be proud of your accomplishments because even if you got to the extent of being a Target, you, you still have things to be proud of because it takes a lot to run a big corporation just like it takes a lot to run a small brand. Every single step within your journey is an accomplishment. So I'm glad you included that. So speaking of being an entrepreneur, a lot of times we have other CEOs and entrepreneurs and solopreneurs that we look up to. And it's not that you want to fashion yourself after them, but everyone has something that we admire and utilize as a push to help us remain steadfast when it comes to reaching our goals and our entrepreneurship. So what CEOs, or if it's just one, what CEO or CEOs do you look up to? Wow. I mean, oh, I mean, I admire you. I have to say, I mean, I admire you because you built just a kingdom. You built an empire. Um, and I, I, I didn't tell her to say that, guys. I just want to put that. <laughs> oh, Thank I, you. I love your post. I've, so I've just heard just in your post, learning some of the things that you've overcome while running a business, while still caring for your family. So I have to say, you, everybody out there, I'm going to cheat on this question. Everybody out there who's doing it, and of course Beyonce. <laughs> yes. Well, listen. I, interview uh, over. You made my day. I need you to just go off. I, mean, I got to do. Thank you. I'm I'm on some Beyonce type shit. Yes. Yes. I don't. I don't blame you. She's someone that I have on my board and um, a few other women, but most definitely I can understand why you admire her because she's had a lot of adversity that she really doesn't speak out about publicly. But what she said in her song was, your best revenge is your paper, and she continues to be what she wants to be mm -hmm. and being a woman and supporting other women and standing up for women and showing women like you can, like she said, have the babies and get back to business. I look, Beyonce's on my list too, so I agree with you on that. I, I don't. I appreciate you for having me on your list. That makes me. <laughs> I get embarrassed by stuff like that sometimes, but honestly, I really do appreciate it because a lot goes into all the things that I do. Okay. So now, let's get back to you. <laughs> All right. So like I said, listen, Beyonce, yes, yes, yes. Someone that I think a lot of people admire. Even guys, even if they don't want to admit it, yeah. they admire Beyonce's work ethic as well and her tenacity. So I would like for you to tell us three things that you like about being an entrepreneur and three things that you dislike about being an entrepreneur. <laughs> You get me on these questions. I am, listen, this, this is what I do. You should have known. I was coming with the heat. Yeah. All right, three things I like about entrepreneur. I get to be yeah. my own boss. I get to be my own boss. I get to be my own boss. Kidding. Okay. That's one. I get to be my own boss. Um, two. Um, hmm. I, I choose who I get to work with and – yeah. And then number three is I have the power to govern my responses. And what I mean when I say that is back when I worked in the corporate industry, a lot of unfair things would happen and I would get really upset. I don't react that way anymore. Um, I think about it and I always try to find a solution of how I can make it best. And I'm, mm. I'm not speaking – specifically about my customers, because of course I want my customers to be happy. But sometimes issue do, issues do arise with your customers, and I want to find a solution so, you know, everything can be happy. But when, I, when I'm speaking of that, I'm speaking about business relationships, um, just really all things pertaining to business. I like to think about what is the really big picture and how can I best respond to the situation to create beneficial solutions for everybody. I, get, I find a huge delight in that. Um, yeah. that I'm able to 
mm, kind of enact that self mastery business. Yeah, so. I can understand that because working in corporate America, there's a chain of command, mm-hmm. and there may be a time where you notice that you have an idea for a best practice that will help the brand do something better than they're currently doing it. And not all brand, not all businesses are open to hearing employees' best practice ideas. So mm-hmm. I can totally understand where you're coming from because when you are the boss and you notice something that could use a better practice of how you do it, you have control over that. Mm-hmm. You can engage those best practices because it's your company and you're the boss. I, that's a good see you know <laughs> you know what you're doing. You know what you're doing. <laughs> and things that I don't like Mm-hmm. These is that I used to make um, dinner like so I could have lunch. Uh, I I don't like the fact that I really don't cook like I used to. Um, I don't like that part. All of the uh, registration, the paperwork, um, that can be unappealing sometimes as well. And then thirdly is um, geez, I really don't have much complaint. It's you can not really a complaint. Something you can't know everything with being in entrepreneurship. That's something that I don't like. It's constantly something that you have to, that you have to learn. Mind you, I do love learning and I seek knowledge. It's just constantly something new, and there's nothing wrong with that. But it is what it is. Absolutely, and those three dislikes doesn't mean that it's anything negative. It's just hey, everything has something. And you're like, oh my god, I wish that I didn't have to do all this paperwork by myself, yeah. or. <laughs> I am responsible for my own paycheck. I love that and I dislike that at the same time. (laughs) You know, so when you, a a minute ago you were talking about the fact that you can enact the best practices once you notice that there's an issue, whether it be, no matter what the issue is. Mm -hmm. So how do you overcome adversity or how have you overcome like some adversity that you faced um, I know you're a new entrepreneur, but I'm pretty sure you've had some type of adversity. How have you overcome that? This is to help any other entrepreneur out there that's just starting out, and this may help guide them, you know, on mm-hmm. their journey. Okay. Um, truthfully, one thing that happened, um, I was pretty new at making T-shirts. I was getting things ready for an event. And the cutter and uh, my vinyl was not lined up. Now, I hadn't known that to the fullest. And it just kept going off and just printing the design, all kinds of crooked. Okay? And, you know, I was in a hurry. You know, I had to get things ready for this event, try to get maybe I went through maybe like seven sheets or more, and it just wasn't wow. working. Yeah, I was crying because the event was wow. later on. And that, that day was later on. I had some things I wanted to get made up. So I was crying. I was thinking I'm not going to show up. But, of course, you have to show up for, for your business, show up with what you got, folks. And don't worry about what the next person has to say about it. Mm-hmm. And so I was crying. I was thinking I wasn't going to be able to make it. I, I put my prayers in to God, my mom, my dad, the angels, the ancestors, the universe. I got up again, failed again, like maybe three, four other times. I got broken down again. So I said, let me go to YouTube. Went to YouTube, took some time, tried it, fixed the problem. So I'm just going to say just keep getting back up again, folks, no matter how hard it is. I mean, I cried. I was crying. I thought about quitting, um, but I didn't give up. And that's what essentially I have done all my life through personal adversity, through uh, my entrepreneurial um, adversity. I may cry. I may fall down. But I'm guaranteed to get back up again because I have to. Um, and it may take them saying this today. Folks, it may take you some hours or some days, weeks, whatever your time is, please get back up again. Um, and that's what I do. Absolutely. That sounds like a godly gangster to me. <laughs> and, <laughs> and gangsters cry sometimes, gangsters, you know? Gangsters do cry. Like, they cry. But if they're godly, they're going to believe that he's going to be right there to help pick them back up. And yes. get on YouTube. <laughs> keep it real with y'all. Keep, keep it real with y'all with that uh, situation I had. Yes, you know. absolutely. Thank you for sharing that because you know a lot of times people don't want to talk about their fails, but I don't like to call them failures. I just like to call them lessons because yes. 
it honestly wasn't a failure. It was a lesson because it happened. Had that never happened to you, imagine if you were at an event and it happened at an event Oh. and you didn't know how to fix it and you just mm. broke down at the event. You got to cry at home. You got to fail at home in private more than once. You got to cry at home in private, learn how to fix it in private and then show up looking amazing at the event. So if it ever happens at the event, you're like, oh, oh, I already know what to do. You know what I mean? Right. And then there's going to be another entrepreneur like, oh, this, this, this lady, Angela, believe she had a little issue. She just stepped right in. But listen, now she's yeah. my entrepreneur that I look up to. You see hey. how that works? You see how yeah. that works? Yeah. <laughs> so last but not least, I'm going to let you go ahead and get on with your day. What does women empowerment and self-love mean to you everything and it starts from when we're young girls so mothers out there auntie godmother sisters whoever know the young girl um teach her self-love make sure that she knows her voice um should be heard and that she should live in the way that she chooses to be her true authentic self let her know that she's beautiful um I didn't get self-love because I was a grown woman. Um, so it's everything to me because everything else is going to manifest from that. Once you have that self-love, man, the the world is your oyster, okay? Mm -hmm. And so mm -hmm. we are stronger together. Um, I think women um, sometimes, I mean, there's a lot of sisterhood relationships out there. I think sometimes we think we're more uh, different than we are alike. And yes, while we are different. We all have a lot of similarities. Some of mm -hmm. us have gone through the same struggles, ailments, or whatever. Um, but I think that um, it's self-love and, and women, women empowerment is important. They go hand in hand, and I'm here for it. Absolutely, because I can't pour into you from an empty cup. So I have to love myself first. And understand that I have to be whole in order to assist you. Because if I don't love myself and there's nothing in my cup, how can I love you? How can I assist you? How can I pour into you? And like you said, they go hand in hand. And we just have to understand that. And I think a lot of times that's where the disconnect comes from. A lot of people think that, oh, women don't get along, especially black women. It's not that. It's just a lot of black women have been through a lot of adversity and trauma in their life. And they haven't realized that they aren't able to pour into their sister because they need to be filled themselves. And sometimes the filling of your cup comes from within. So I really appreciate you for being my guest today, being our feature spotlight, being godly and gangsta, and bringing that gangsta <laughs> to conversations with Cream. I really appreciate it. And again, Congratulations for being 100% self-employed. I'm so proud of you. I know that that's something that you really wanted to do the last time when I did the interview. When you interviewed me. Yeah. So I'm really happy to see that you were able to accomplish that goal. And I can't wait to see what next goal you accomplish. So if you have anything that you'd like to say to anyone that's listening or anyone that's watching, the floor is yours, and don't forget to let them know how they can follow you on social media and how they can support your apparel line. Awesome. Thank you so much, and I really appreciate you for having me on your platform to share my business with the world. Thank you so, much. <laughs> so, listen, everybody, I am Angela Belief, poet, media extraordinaire, and the creator of Godly and Gangsta Apparel, also Angela Belief LLC. If you need a radio, television, or event host, I'm your gal. Godly and Gangsta Apparel, I created that for you. Um, I allow God to be the head of my life, and I'm gangsta about the reasons that he brought me here, which is my purpose, and protecting mine. If you want to be part of the Godly Gangsta Apparel and be blessed by wearing it and bless others, um, it will be available at AngelaBelieves.com, or you can follow me on Instagram at I am Angela Believes and send me a DM for your order. Also catch my podcast, All Things with Angela Belief, airs every Friday on Instagram, currently at I am Angela Belief, 6 p.m. Central Standard Time. Awesome. Thank you so much again. I really appreciate it. And make sure you guys follow her, support her. I mean, because like she said, and like I've been reminding you, you never know which hands you're going to get. <laughs> you better choose the golly ones. 
and support her brand. <laughs> Godly and I got to say, for anybody out there, out there struggling, keep putting one foot in front of the other. You can do it. And remember, with God, all things are possible. Absolutely. Thank you so much again. I really appreciate it. I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. Do the same. Thank you. <laughs>